Hello everyone, welcome to David Griffith's Electrodynamics, problem 2.34. So this one says to find the energy stored in a uniformly charged solid sphere of radius r and a charge q. And it tells us to do it three different ways. So we gotta do three different parts here. So the first part says to use equation 2.43 um, and it says to use the, we found the potential in problem 2.21 so we already, because we have to use the potential so equation 2.43 is this, so the, the work uh, to assemble this system or the, the energy uh, stored in this system is equal to one half the integral of rho, the charge density times, the, times v uh, d tau and in this case d tau in, in spherical coordinates is going to be r squared sine of theta dr d theta d phi so from problem 2.21 we found the potential uh, of, of a uniformly charged solid sphere to be q over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, 1 over 2r times 3 minus r squared little r squared uh, divided by the radius squared and I believe this is the potential um, inside of the sphere yeah this has to be the potential inside of the sphere and so given this potential v we can plug that into our integral equation here and rho is going to be rho is a constant since it's a uniformly charged sphere so the charge density is constant so that will come out of the integral and so if you plug in v you will get rho over 2 and q over 4 pi epsilon naught and the 1 over 2r comes out of the integral and what we end up with is the integral of uh, from phi goes from 0 to 2 pi. So we integrate over the volume of the sphere, right? So phi goes from 0 to 2 pi d phi. Uh, we have a theta integral from 0 to pi. And the sine of theta d theta from our d tau is going to be a part of that integral. And then we integrate from r from is equal to 0 to the radius. And for this, we have the r squared from the d tau multiplied by this term here, 3 minus r squared over, uh, over the radius squared dr. So that's our that's our integral we have to solve. And um, just a handy note, uh, this these these two first integrals here pop up a lot. The integral from zero to two pi of d phi and the integral of sine of theta d theta from zero to pi. Um, those two integrals multiply together, evaluate to just four pi. So that's a very quick and easy thing to eliminate. So what we get is um, rho q over um, sixteen, right? Because that's four times eight times two. So that's 16 pi epsilon naught r, and then I have the 4 pi from these two integrals here, and we just have the integral of 3 r squared minus, uh, I distributed the r squared through, so we have 3 r squared minus r to the fourth over capital R squared, the radius with respect to r. So doing that integral, it's a very simple, you know, just power rule integral. So we have rho q over 4 epsilon naught r, um, where uh, the, the, the pi canceled and the 16 and the 4, or just, just 1 fourth. Um, then we get r cubed minus r to the fifth over 5 r squared. And this integral is evaluated from 0 to capital R. So plugging that in, what we get is rho cubed 4 epsilon r, um, capital R cubed minus uh, r cubed over 5, because capital R to the fifth divided by capital R squared is capital R cubed. And um, Evaluating that, you know, just doing some more uh, simplifying this term here. That's just four fifths r cubed. So we get rho q over four pi epsilon r four fifths r cubed. But the four cancels out. Um, one of the r's cancel out, um, and we get rho q over five epsilon naught r squared. And if you want to write this in terms of the charge Q instead of the charge density, well, we know the charge density is going to be the total charge Q divided by 4 thirds pi R cubed. So you can write that and you get the Q squared because this Q is already here. So you get Q squared divided by the 4 thirds pi R cubed times the R squared and the 5 epsilon naught that's already there. So the R squared on top cancels and the 3 comes to the top. You get 3 Q squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. Uh, 5r and that's what the that would be the total energy stored in that sphere So that's one method of doing you know use you know It's one method to find the total energy stored, but there is another method There's another equation we can use and wants us to verify that hey We get the same answer regardless of you know which equation we use So the other equation is that the work stored 
is epsilon naught over two, uh, the integral over all space, or just you know enough space to, to enclose the, the source of the charge. And you're integrating the, the magnitude of the electric, uh, the electric field squared d tau. So um, we already solved this problem, and I forget what problem this comes from. The electric field created by a um, uniformly charged solid sphere. Um, you know, you have the two regions where R is greater than the radius and R is less than the radius, so inside of the sphere. So when you're outside, it kind of just looks like a point charge. It's Q over 4 pi, 4 pi epsilon naught R squared and the R hat direction. And when you're inside of the sphere, it's Q times R divided by 4 pi epsilon naught the radius cubed and the R hat direction. So to do this integral, we have to evaluate, we have to split up the integral into these two regions. So I have the epsilon naught over two I'm out here, and we have phi going from zero to two pi again, d phi, theta going from you know zero to pi sine of theta d theta, and I factored these two integrals out because they are both, you know, you have to do this integral for both of these when you split the integral up, right? So I basically factored these integrals out because you'll get four pi in both cases, so really they can come out and you'll just end up getting four pi factored out. But the R integral is what gets split up here. So you have R going from zero to the radius of the um, bottom one Q, uh, squared. So it'd be Q squared, um, then R squared. But because you have the d tau, um, which I've already distributed here, the d tau has already been written. You have an R squared from the d tau. So that's R squared because it's the magnitude of the electric field squared. And then you have another r squared from d tau, so it's r to the fourth. And then you have everything on the bottom squared, so it's 16 pi squared, epsilon naught squared, r to the sixth power, dr. So that's the first integral. Then the other integral is going from the radius out to infinity. And so um, that's using this top one here, because we're outside of the radius now. And we have q squared, r squared. Um, that r squared is coming from the, uh, the differential volume element, d tau over 16 pi squared epsilon naught squared r to the fourth power, right, dr. So we have these two integrals here to solve. So um, you can do this. So the, the phi and the theta integral evaluate, evaluate to four pi. So I've just factored that out. And then I factored out all these common terms, the q squared over 16 pi squared epsilon naught squared, and written the integrals in a more simpler form. So we ended up with uh, zero to r of r to the fourth over capital R to the sixth dr plus from r uh, the radius to infinity over one over r squared dr. And so these are also very simple power rule integrals. There's nothing special about them. Um, so um, factoring out this and kind of combining everything, um, what we end up with is q squared over eight pi epsilon naught for the constants. And then we have r to the fifth over five r to the sixth minus one over r evaluated at those two bounds for each one and when you evaluate the bounds what you end up with is q squared over a pi epsilon naught you get capital r to the fifth divided by five capital r to the sixth so obviously we'll just get one over r there or one over five r and then this one evaluates to just one over r so we get q squared over a pi epsilon naught one over five r plus one over r and this combines to uh, six fifths r so we get six Q squared over eight pi epsilon naught five R. And the, uh, let's see, I think we just divide every, or, um, let me think. Yeah, so six eighths becomes three fourths. So we get three Q squared over four pi epsilon naught five R, which is exactly what we got before. If I can go back, maybe. Three Q squared over four pi epsilon naught five R, yep. So indeed, doing it that second way does give us the correct answer still, or the same answer. And so now let's look at the third way. Part C is to use equation 2.44. And for the surface inter or the volume integral, take a spherical volume of radius A, and um, what happens as A goes to infinity. So equation 2.44 is this equation, so it's epsilon naught over two. Um, the integral over some volume that encloses the charge of e squared d tau, which is what we just did. Um, 
But if you read through Griffiths, this equation can be reduced to this, this first equation um, as long as you integrate over all the space rather than just over that volume. So um, anyways, we also have the surface integral of V, the potential times E dot dA. And so this is gonna be a little bit more complicated because we have these two integrals to solve. So as long as V is large enough to encompass all the charge and S is a sphere of radius A that's greater than the radius of our sphere, um, we know the potential already is Q over four pi epsilon naught R. Um, and the work then is epsilon naught over two, right? And then we have, I just put a bracket. So we have, I believe this is, I put the surface integral first. So this is the potential Q over four pi epsilon naught R and then times the electric field um, E dot DA. So Q over four pi epsilon naught R squared times dA, which is R squared sine of theta d theta d phi. So that's this first integral. And then plus this integral. So we have um, R going from zero to capital R of E squared to tau. And then um, we're integrating up over volume where our volume is some sphere of radius A. So then we go from the, from the radius R to A of one over four pi epsilon Q over R squared, which is the the electric field um, outside squared, and then times four pi R squared dr, where this four pi R squared dr is the same as this d tau. I just, um, in this case, the four pi is the theta integral and the phi integral again. I just decided to simplify it, and the R squared you know, comes from the volume element, so R squared dr. So, this integral is essentially kind of what we did in our first part B as well as kind of the, I mean, it's kind of similar. So um, this integral is evaluated within the, the charge. So you have to use that other uh, case uh, to evaluate that. So anyways, when you write all this out, so we have epsilon naught over two and you end up with, so this is the surface integral, I believe. So this is Q squared over 16 pi squared epsilon naught squared. Um, if I go back, I'm just like multiplying this out, right? And, and so you get R times R cubed and then you have R squared on top. So, and then you have the theta integral and the phi integral and then you have one over R. Uh, and then, oops. So, um, and you evaluate R uh, where R is equal to A. And this is not me solving the integral, but this is just saying, hey, this surface integral is evaluated at R equal to A. So I end up replacing um, R equal to A. Um, and then plus uh, the, the second integral, which is this one I didn't write out because I just had a condensed room. So this integral where we're integrating the electric field squared inside of the sphere again. So we have the theta and the phi integral, and this is gonna be two pi. We have Q squared uh, over 16 pi squared epsilon naught squared. We have R to the fourth over R to the sixth dr, which is exactly what we had in part B, um, plus the third integral, which is Q squared over 16 pi squared epsilon naught squared, four pi, and the integral from the radius to A of one over R squared dr. So this is just me writing out these three integrals and kind of combining terms and, and stuff and multiplying the constants. So then once you've got all this, uh, you can um, say, so we have this first um, integral here. So we have Q squared over four pi epsilon naught squared um, because this is four pi. This, the, these two integrals is four pi. So 16, uh, four over 16 is four. The pi cancels and we just get Q squared over four pi epsilon naught squared and then A right? This is just me plugging in A for R. And then we get, um, let's see. So the second integral, this one becomes, well, the four pi, of course, from the first two integrals, we get Q squared over, you know, four pi squared epsilon naught squared. So a pi cancels, a four cancels, or the 16 becomes a four. Um, you have this R to the sixth, um, and then from the, from the integration, you get 
capital R to the fifth over five once you plug in the bounds. And you know that obviously cancels um, with five of the that on the bottom. And then this bottom integral is just Q squared over four pi epsilon naught squared. Um, you know, canceling the four pi and the 16 pi squared. And then this integral evaluates to negative one over R evaluated from R to A. So simplifying this even more, we have epsilon naught over two. We have our first term, which is Q squared over four pi epsilon naught squared A plus Q squared over four pi epsilon naught squared five R plus Q squared over four pi epsilon naught squared times, uh, once you plug in the bounds, you get one, one over R minus one over A and so nicely, those that epsilon naught out here is going to make all those epsilon naughts on the bottom become just epsilon, epsilon to the first power. Um, and you can combine, you know, so if you take all this and factor out the common terms, essentially you're left with, you have the Q squared or four plus naught, one over two, um, and you have one over A plus one over five R minus one over A plus one over R. So the one over A's cancel and you get one over one fifth R, or one over five R plus one over R, which is six fifths R. And um, this six cancels with this two to make that a three. And you get uh, you get three Q squared over four pi epsilon naught five R, which is exactly the same as what we have been uh, getting for the other three parts. So <laughs> yeah, so no matter how you evaluate the, the work stored in that charge configuration or otherwise the energy stored um, in that charge configuration, you get the same answer. And that's kind of the point of this problem is to show you that all of those equations give you the same answer. Um, and for this equation that we use for part C, as, the, as A, so we used a, a volume, a, a sphere of radius A for the volume or, or for the surface as well um, and the volume that encloses our charge, our, our sphere. Um, and as A increases, as the radius of that sphere increases that we're integrating over, um, the volume integral becomes larger. Um, and uh, the contribution from the surface integral uh, sort of um, goes to zero. Uh, and there's an argument. If you, if, uh, I think if you look on page, let's see, 94 of David Griffith's, uh, if you have a third edition, page 94, he goes through a, uh, the paragraph at the bottom of that page kind of goes through a sort of conceptual derivation. So it says, what volume are we integrating over? Let's go back to the formula we started with. So, um, it is clear that we should integrate over the region where the charge is located, but actually any larger volume would do just well. The extra territory we throw in will contribute nothing to the integral since the charge density is zero out there. So with this in mind, if we look at equation 2.44, which is uh, this equation here, um, what happens here when we enlarge the volume beyond the minimum necessary to trap all the charge. Well, the integral of E squared can only increase because the integrand being positive, evidently the surface integral then must decrease correspondingly to leave the sum intact. In fact, at large distances from the charge, the electric field goes like one over R squared, and the potential goes like one over R, while the surf surface area goes like one over R squared. Speaking then, the surface integral goes down like one over R. So, Please understand that this equation does give you the correct energy for whatever volume you, you use as long as it encloses all the charge. So that's kind of the explanation that Griffiths gives um, for why this integral is essentially gives you the same as uh, this integral, which this integral was just that first part of that integral, except we're now integrating over all space instead of an enclosed volume. So anyways, I hope this helps. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, again, if you want the PDFs of all this kind of stuff, of all my work, um, you can subscribe to my Patreon account and get access to that stuff. So again, thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.